So this is the part you need to pay attention to if you're in microgroup. And thank all of you that are in microgroups. So appreciative for you. If you're not, please join me online on Wednesday nights. And, and we're, going, we're just going to keep moving forward. But I'm grateful for all of you. More and more of you are getting in microgroups. But this is the part that you need to pay attention to. So Julie and I were out one day and, and we came home. And Trin and Tanner um, were, were there and they were eating some cereal, whatever, and I'm telling you, when we walk through the door and we don't see Thatcher, the first question is, where's Thatcher? And, and, and because they are caring brothers and they're loving brothers to Thatcher, they said, we don't know. <laughs> so I, I casually go upstairs and I go to his room, Thatcher's room, and I'm looking, and he's not in his bed. And, and, and I hear my wife say something, Thatcher! And if you're a parent, you know what that feels like when you can't find your kid. You know the urgency in the voice when you can't locate your child. When she said that, I'm telling you, something hit me right in my gut. And I come downstairs and I'm looking around and we can't find Thatcher. I'm telling you, it doesn't take long for your mind to start going to the worst case scenario. Like, what's got, where is he at? What, what happened? Where is he at? And, and I'm telling you, mama and daddy were moving pretty quickly around that house. And we were looking for Thatcher. I'm telling you. What had happened, thank the good Lord, is he had snuck in our bed. And he got under our covers and he got under our pillows and we couldn't see him and he fell asleep. But I can't tell you how relieved I was when I saw him. Now, if you're not a mom and dad, you don't understand those feelings. You don't get that. But if you're a mom and dad and you can't lay your eyes on one of your kids when you want to, I'm telling you, there's, a, there's an energy and there's a fear and there's a, something that comes over you like you cannot believe. And, and, and when, if your child was missing... Well, what would you do to find your child? What would you do? If I couldn't locate Thatcher that day, well, I, I would go through any expense. I, I, I would turn the place upside down. I, I, I would bankrupt myself, trying everything I could to locate him. Do you hear me? Hear me. If I would do that for Thatcher's physical body, why wouldn't I do that for his eternal soul? If I, if I would go to the greatest extent to find his physical body, why wouldn't I spend that time and energy making sure he's saved? Can I just talk to you for a moment, growth groups? Can I just talk to you for a moment? Is that we need to share with our kids how God changed our lives. We need to share with our group what part of our journey God shifted and began to change and transform our lives. I don't know your story, but here's the good, the, the part that you need to know. Your family should know your story. Because they need to know we didn't get here because of our last name. We didn't get here because of others. We got here because God has been faithful and merciful and gracious to us. I'm here because of the mercies of God. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Our families need to hear our story. They need to know the time that you were struggling and you battled through and yet God in his great mercy rescued you and found you and turned your life around. Because faith begins when we understand where we came from and those around us know. Whatever you do, how are you going to tell others if our families don't know what God has brought us through? My brother Zuniga, do I have to tell my kids my deepest, darkest sin? No. But you can't tell them a little bit to let them know it wasn't as easy as it looks. There's some real things that I went through. And if they're mature enough to be honest with them, it would really help them. They need to know that you battled through some things and you made some mistakes. And you got something wrong that you're ashamed of, that you regret. And you wish you could do a re-over, but because God's so merciful to you, he saved you, redeemed you. I'm telling you, when kids and teenagers and young adults begin to hear that others battled and won, others endured and made it through, it gives them hope that if they could make it, I can make it. And I just want to tell you, I don't care what you're facing, you can make it. I don't care what you've done in your past, God's able to bring you through. I don't care what you're facing now. Come on, Goodlettsville. The power of the Holy Ghost is able. It's able to help you and bring you through. Can I just act like I'm preaching a youth camp here for a moment? Because this is about the time I preach at a youth camp and tell you this. Greater than God's saving power is God's keeping power. 
greater than God's ability to get you out of drugs and out of marijuana. It's God's ability to keep you living, saved, sanctified, holy, full of joy. God's able to keep you. God's able to keep you. God's able to hold you in the fire. He's able to keep you. Brother Dago, you can make your way up here slowly. Because this is what I know. The gospel came to you trying to get to someone else. Truth came to you trying to get to someone else. You're not the dead end of this message. You're not the dead end of this truth. You're a conduit for God's story. And there's somebody in your world right now that's hoping that you would care enough, love them enough to tell them what they need to hear. There's somebody in your world right now that their world's in turmoil. And they need to know there's something bigger than my problem in my family. But the scary part to me is simply this. Too many of us have lost the joy of our salvation. We're not excited anymore about being saved. It doesn't have that passion anymore. You don't want to go to hell. Brother McManus, you helped me today because you, you texted me, text me after the first service. And I know I'm not supposed to be on my phone in church, but I wanted to find it anyways. That verse I just said is Psalms 51, 12, restore unto me, David writing, the joy of thy salvation. But he asked, he said, did you ever read the next verse after that? I said, no. Can you bring this up, tech people? Can you bring up Psalms 51, 13? Can you bring that up? I'll give you a moment to. Psalms 51, 13. Well, there's way too many people that have lost the joy of their salvation. And when you've lost the joy of living for God and when you've lost the joy of being in his presence, when you've lost the joy of having truth, it's hard to do the right thing. It's hard. Psalms 51, 13. Do we have that? Maybe not. I'm going to read it anyways. He said, then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee in other words I can't help anybody if I've lost my own joy and my own passion and my own zeal I can't help anybody but if I ever get the joy back if I ever get my joy back of being saved then 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 will I you can struggle if you want to. You can battle it out if you want to. But I'm going to tell you, there's more because the whole world needs Jesus.